The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Wetlands are among the most productive ecosystems on the planet, and conserving these healthy habitats is the key to ensuring our sporting traditions for the future. Today we'll learn about one organization's mission to conserve, restore, and manage our wetlands and their associated habitats. Unlimited is brought to you by Midway USA. Hi, I'm Dale Hall, CEO for Ducks Unlimited. Ducks Unlimited was founded in 1937 during the Dust Bowl era when North America's drought plagued waterfowl populations had plunged to unprecedented lows. Determined not to sit by as the continent's waterfowl dwindled beyond recovery, a small group of sportsmen joined together to form an organization that became known as Ducks Unlimited and its mission, habitat conservation. Thanks to decades of abiding by that single mission, Ducks Unlimited is now the world's largest and most effective private waterfowl and wetlands conservation organization. DU is able to multilaterally deliver its work through a series of partnerships with private individuals, landowners, public agencies, scientific communities, and other entities. For more than 73 years, DU's members, volunteers, and professionals have built an incredibly solid foundation for the organization and have maintained focus. That focus, to conserve adequate wetlands to fill the skies with ducks and geese today, tomorrow, and forever. And it describes the dedication of conservationists to never forget why we do what we do. And waterfowl are not the only beneficiaries of DU's habitat work. Wetlands improve the overall health of our environment by recharging and purifying groundwater, moderating floods and reducing soil erosion. Wetlands are nature's most productive ecosystems, providing critical habitat to more than 900 wildlife species and invaluable recreation opportunities for people to enjoy. The United States alone has lost more than half of its original wetlands and continues to lose more than 80,000 acres of the wetlands most important to wildlife each year. Join us for the next 30 minutes as we celebrate a conservation success story, Ducks Unlimited. There is so much to be proud of and so much to point to as a model of conservation, including more than 12 million acres conserved for North America's waterfowl, a truly amazing accomplishment. Our conservation programs benefit not just the duck hunter, but they benefit the, the deer hunter, the turkey hunter, the pheasant hunter, uh, the fisherman, uh, the bird watcher. You know, just the outdoor enthusiasts in general. Uh, there's so many benefits to our conservation programs that, that go across the board and, and reach out to all sorts of people and wildlife. When we do a restoration project, an awful lot of things benefit. Shorebirds, songbirds, a wide variety of different species of wildlife depend on these places. And we're really focused on waterfowl, but all these other things do end up benefiting. Now, the, the work of Ducks Unlimited, while it uh, is critically important to waterfowl, there are hundreds of species that benefit from the work of Ducks Unlimited. When you think of the role that wetlands and water play on Earth and in our environment, um, deer hunters benefit, turkey hunters benefit, but even those who just like clean water and a place to recreate on the water all benefit from Ducks Unlimited. All of us as Americans have benefited in one way or another from DU's conservation efforts. But waterfowl conservation still faces serious challenges as our wetlands and other habitats continue to be degraded and destroyed across our continent. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, what will it take to reverse this negative trend? First and foremost, our, our volunteers are the driving force behind our events. And that's what most people are familiar with when you say Ducks Unlimited, they might have been to an event in their local community, and those are volunteers that run those events. Events we, we do have a limited number of staff out there that work with those volunteers, but when you hear about 300 people going to uh, their local banquet hall and buying prints and guns and decoys to raise money for Ducks Unlimited, those are volunteers that are putting those events together. 
Outside of that, volunteers might hold golf tournaments or fishing tournaments or barbecues to help raise money for the organization and in addition also spread the message of Ducks Unlimited. Some of our volunteers have more of a specialized effort that they put forth. They might be involved in our major gift program where they are soliciting large gifts or they actually might get involved in some of our projects that we have across the country where they're actually going out and getting their hands dirty. Without volunteers, Ducks Unlimited would simply fail to exist. If you're interested in volunteering, uh, one, you can go on our website and there's a check off there to contact us that you'd like to be engaged on a local committee as a volunteer or best shot is to go to the dinner and uh, seek someone out on the committee. If our regional director is there, you can seek that person out as well. But uh, just let them know your interest in being on the committee. Ducks Unlimited brought to you by Midway USA, just about everything for hunting. And by Auto Vent Shade, lets fresh air in, keeps rain out. The United States has lost more than half of its original wetlands. Now losing nature's most productive ecosystem causes serious threats to not only waterfowl, but to scores of other wildlife and people too. So you have to ask your question, what's being done? What's being done to help conserve and protect nature's most threatened habitat? The habitat conservation work that DU does not only benefits hunters and anglers in terms of the game that they take every year, but it benefits society as a whole. Wetlands provide functions such as holding water that otherwise would exacerbate flooding downstream from wetland habitats. Wetlands hold water that contributes to base flows in rivers and streams and helps provide good quality, clean, reliable drinking water, for example. DU was founded by a group of waterfowl hunters more than 73 years ago, and it's the passion for waterfowl hunting that fuels the dedication of so many DU members to give back to the resources that make their outdoor experiences so enjoyable. Well, Ducks Unlimited was formed by a group of really concerned sportsmen back after the dirty 30s. At the end of that period of time, they decided they needed to do something to fix the Canadian prairies, which were very dry. They were concerned about waterfowl. So they launched from that, started off with a goal of raising a million dollars to fix the Canadian prairies, and obviously that wasn't enough, so uh, now they've, we've moved into a much different kind of organization. For the year 2008, we are the 103rd largest nonprofit. There are a number of agencies that rank and rate charities, and Better Business Bureau is one, Charity Navigator, GuideStar, are all those agencies that rate and rank, and Ducks Unlimited has a perfect four-star rating by all of those agencies. When a donor, whether it be a $25 member or a million-dollar donor, 87% of their gift goes to our conservation work. You know, we are very proud of the fact that we have well over 600,000 members, but the factor that makes Ducks Unlimited head and shoulders above other nonprofit organizations are core volunteers. At any given time, across the country, across the continent, we have an army of volunteers. The volunteers are what make this organization so successful and distinguish it from other organizations. In the nonprofit world, the life of a volunteer is only a few years. At Ducks Unlimited, we have volunteers who've been with us for 50 years. Wetlands are invaluable not only to waterfowl, but also to our overall quality of life on Earth. And although a great deal of work has been done in the conservation of wildlife habitat, and many important questions have been answered, there's still a lot to be learned from taking a scientific approach. We use satellite imagery, aircraft imagery, and a lot of computers and a lot of computing power with a lot of scientists of different kinds who look at these habitats and do their best to figure out what's missing in those habitats for waterfowl. And then what can we do to fix those areas? And that's really where we focus our energy. So Dale, what do you do at DU and what's your background? My job at Ducks Unlimited is chief biologist. And it's uh, for me actually a professional capstone, if you will. Um, I started hunting waterfowl in the mid-1950s with my dad and, and, and I caught something. Uh, it's, it's contagious. 
from the standpoint of my personal involvement in waterfowl and wetlands, uh, I just like to have my feet wet. But once you're involved in waterfowl and wetlands, you gain insights pretty quickly into just how important they are continentally, worldwide. We all like clean water, plentiful water. From a waterfowl and wetlands perspective, it even becomes more clear. Uh, waterfowl, thus named, because they require water throughout their annual cycle. And once you begin to understand the role that continental water conditions play on duck populations, their status year in, year out, their numbers, their distribution, you gain a, a fascination for the continental scale at which this business occurs. What's the outlook? How bad or good is our situation currently? In the U.S. alone, we've lost somewhere in the range of about half of our historic wetland habitat base. In addition to losing about half, much of what remains is in an altered condition. So it doesn't perform anywhere near the way it did historically. We're losing now wetlands somewhere at a rate of about 80,000 acres important to waterfowl on an annual basis. That's dramatically improved from uh, the period of 1950s through the 70s when we were losing a half a million acres per year. So we've stemmed that loss to a degree through policies, through efforts like Ducks Unlimited, through efforts of Fish and Wildlife Service or the state conservation agencies. We really have done a fair amount to stem the rate at which they're lost, but they're still being lost. And so that's a, a key objective for Ducks Unlimited is to make sure that we continue to protect wetlands to restore them where we can, to manage those that we have in the best way available. So how do you go about doing that? Well, the key, of course, is identify which parts of the continent are most important to work in. And Ducks Unlimited have already done that. We've identified which areas of the continent are most important for waterfowl of different species. We've identified which portions of the, the wetlands themselves are under the greatest threat. We've identified priority areas of the continent, including the breeding grounds, including migration areas, and including wintering areas that are most important to make sure that waterfowl increase in number and maintain their numbers over time. Water on, water off is the key to wetland performance, wetland function. So the key to Ducks Unlimited is identifying where wetlands can be restored, where they can be protected, and where they can be managed to make sure that they perform the way that they're intended to. What do you feel from your position as you're in the field are some of the, the biggest hurdles you come across? Well, the, the key is, of course, is understanding uh, the processes that are affecting wetlands. In some instances, those processes have, have simply altered the basin integrity. Uh, they simply don't hold water anymore. In some other instances, they've affected the processes that drive water. Um, take the prairie potholes, for example. Water still runs across the earth as snow melts each year, collects in the basins. But the problem is the basins themselves, in some respects, have been altered. This is especially too, true in, um, in Prairie Canada. And the result is, even though the snow melts, runs off, it doesn't stay in the basins long enough to uh, provide habitat for birds upon arrival, for broods when they're being raised, or for birds as they're being fed up for fall migration. The threats to wetlands and, as a result, to waterfowl vary across landscapes. In some instances, uh, the primary threat, take the Gulf Coast as an example, is with subsidence of wetland basins, of the coastal marshes themselves. The rate at which marshes are being built now is a great deal less than what it was historically. And so marshes have eroded. They're not being replaced at the rate they were. So the threat there is completely different than when you go to the prairie potholes, where the threat primarily there for waterfowl is protection of the basins themselves and protection of the grasslands that surround those basins that the birds nest in. So you really have to look at each landscape differently as you plot the course of conservation action. How does nesting research apply to your all's programs for sustaining wetlands? We know from research that somewhere in the range of 80 to 90 percent of the processes that drive annual duck numbers, their recruitment, their survival, and so on, occur on the breeding grounds. By understanding the way in which birds use the landscape, the impact of landscape change, whether it's due to agriculture, whether it's due to infrastructure development or whatever, the degree to which those changes affect the numbers of nests that hatch, the numbers of young that survive, and the rate at which they fledge, grow up to be able to fly south, tells us when and where we need to do our management efforts. Our nesting research in the prairies of the U.S. and the prairies of Canada tell us where to work, and which aspects of those habitats need to be protected, restored, or conserved. 
What is the nesting research showing right now? I mean, what is the current outlook? A uh, couple of different things. Uh, one is that nest success is an obvious factor in determining whether or not fall flights of ducks continue to be plentiful. The other thing it shows is that brood survival is emerging to be at least as important, in some areas more important, than nest success. They hatch, but if the broods don't survive, they don't uh, end up in the fall flight either. So it really kind of depends on the landscape and which parts of that landscape are controlling duck numbers, their survival, and the rate at which they're recruited, introduced into next year's population. Well, as a DU member, there's a lot of things I don't know that I think a lot of people don't know anyway. So I appreciate you talking to me and, and explaining to everybody, you know, some issues in between the lines that a lot of us maybe aren't, aren't so aware of. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure. I appreciate I your time. It. Hope to see you in the marsh this fall. Yeah. Ducks Unlimited brought to you by Midway USA. Just about everything for hunting. And by Auto Vent Shade. Let's fresh air in, keeps rain out. Each year, Congress makes important decisions that directly affect wildlife habitat, so it's crucial your voice is heard. DU's presence in Washington and in every state allows them to work with legislatures and non-governmental partners to promote policy and encourage actions that directly benefit waterfowl, wetland conservation, and sportsmen. Public policy has been very influential in what happens with conservation. For a long time, the policies of this country were to drain wetlands, put them into agriculture, or do something else with them because they're considered wastelands. But policies now have changed so that much of the policy of this country is to protect wetlands, to try to conserve them, to restore them. And so it's very important that sportsmen get very active in policy. Ducks Unlimited is active in policy these days in particular. And we focus on ways of saving what's left, restoring what we can, managing what we have, conserving the water, and doing the right thing with policy. If we're not involved in this, a single stroke of a pen can change all that almost overnight. Ducks Unlimited and conservationists as a whole have been getting more and more involved in public policy in recent years, simply because it's only through public policy that we can, we can address the, the large scale challenges that conservation is facing these days. We're the beneficiaries to a lot of uh, public funds, and some of those funds are based on congressional legislation and oftentimes those legislators are looking to interest groups and Ducks Unlimited, the fact that we have 650,000 members, 60,000 volunteers, 4,500 events a year across the country says something and it has an impact when, when those legislators are, are taking action for conservation measures. The other thing that's very important about this organization is it works with partners all kinds of partners. If somebody has the same interest that we do in conservation of wetlands, waterfowl, related wildlife, then we end up working together with them. You won't find a single project in North America that doesn't have somebody else's name on the sign when you get done with that particular project. So DU has strategies whereby we work with private landowners. They either sell or donate a conservation easement to Ducks Unlimited and that land then is restricted in how it can be used in the future but not from the standpoint that the landowner is giving up rights that he doesn't want to give up but typically they give up the right to develop what is good wildlife habitat because their earnest desire is to see that that wildlife habitat remain in perpetuity. We have recruited a, a gentleman to the Wetlands America Trust Board who is now the president of Caterpillar and Caterpillar is one of our great emerging partners at Ducks Unlimited. Ford trucks, Heavy Shot, Winchester, Yamaha, uh, a, a, there's no greater partnership than Bank of America. All of those corporate partners are critical to the success of our mission. The major donor plays an incredibly important role in our conservation work. Um, almost all of our conservation projects are on the ground, dirt work, restoration, conservation, require money from different sources. And Ducks Unlimited it is the master in terms of bringing a number of partners together, whether they be public source funding, private source funding, uh, grassroots money. It all comes together to fund 
conservation work. We take your dollar when you come to an event and match it with the North American Waterfowl Management Plan dollar to, sometimes we get up to a seven to one match on our money. Wow. So we can take the, the revenue, say, from an event, say it's $10,000, and turn that into $70,000 to put into to conservation just by matching it with different government associations, et cetera. In a normal year, 80% of your dollar would go into conservation. We've got that proven. We're very efficient with your money. So probably 13% is in fundraising, 13 to 15% is in fundraising, and the rest is in administration or overhead. The money that is raised from events is sent to Ducks Unlimited National where our scientists and our biologists and our pro professional staff make a conscious decision on where it can best be spent to fulfill the life cycle needs of North America's waterfowl. How would you describe the impact that hunters have on uh, wetland conservation and wildlife habitat? Well, I think it's critical. If you go back to the 1930s to the Dust Bowl days, it was hunters that realized that we had a problem with the waterfowl population. It was hunters that put together a group called More Game Birds for America that eventually turned into Ducks Unlimited, uh, who saw the vision of combining all hunters from across the country to put forth their financial efforts to make sure that waterfowl were taken care of all the way from their breeding grounds to the north and eventually throughout the flyways all the way down to the wintering grounds. Without hunters, we simply would not have wetlands and waterfowl conservation to the levels that we do today. Preserving our wetlands and waterfowl is important to us all. And as hunters, we can't afford to be takers. We have to give something back. Ducks Unlimited is where you can make a difference and experience the reward of helping to conserve some of these special places.